So if you're ever faced with this error in your iPad, there are two things that we need to understand. The first thing is why does it happen in the first place? And the second thing is the use cases when it happens inside of our UiPath process. Once you understand these two things, you will always be able to solve the problem in under one minute. That being said, let's open UiPath and start working. Okay, so to answer the first question of why this error occurs, it's actually a simple answer is because of the initialization. So when a variable is not initialized, UiPath cannot work with this variable. You cannot make changes to this variable and you cannot add data to it. So for example, here I have an add data row activity and I have a demo data table uh, variable that I have created in here. So if I launch the process and I try to add a data row to this demo data table, I'm going to have the error object reference because I haven't initialized the data table. This is why we always have to start our process with a build data table. But that doesn't explain why a lot of people, when they start using UiPath, they struggle with this exact question. So the problem is that we have two types of variables. We have primitive variables and we have complex data structures or objects. So for the primitive variables like int32, boolean, etc., UiPath initializes the value by default. We don't need to do anything about it. This is why we only need to define the value in here and we can use it inside of UiPath, no problem. But in the case of data tables and lists and other complex data types, we can't do that. We have to initialize the variable before we can work with it. And to understand this very clearly, we're going to create a variable called demo int and it's going to be an int 32. And here we're going to put it inside the message box just to see it. So here we have defined a de demo int and we haven't given it any value. So if we try to show the demo int variable, what do you think the value that's going to be shown? I wanted to pause the video and just tell me. It's very easy, but I wanted to, to stop the video and think about the value that's going to be shown. Is it going to show me an empty variable or what, what is it going to show me exactly? Okay, so let's launch the process and see what's going to happen. So as you can see, it gave me zero. So UiPath have, and any other programming language, when we give a primitive variable, it initializes it with a value, like the value that we have here, which is zero. When we give a string, the initialization is an empty string. So now that we understand this, we understand that primitive no need for in, uh, initialization and complex. We need to initialize it. How can we initialize a data table? Simply by using the activity build data table. And here we can define the uh, columns that we have. And we can click on OK. And of course, we're going to go to properties. And we are going to put this inside the demo data table. And now if we launch the process, nothing is going to happen because the add data row have worked correctly. And this data row have been added to the data table successfully. Okay, so what I have shown you is a case where we not only need to uh, initialize our data table, but also we have defined the columns. So the structure of the data table. There are use cases where we only need to initialize it and we don't need to go as far as defining the structure. And we're gonna see how we can do that right now. So let me comment these. Let me use a right range, range workbook activity. And inside of this right range workbook, let me just name it demo dot CLSX. Then let me put sheets one in here and then let's put demo data table. And as you can see, we have comment out the part that initializes it and uh, define the structure. So we're going to launch it right now. And of course, we are going to get the error object reference because this demo data table is not initialized. So what we should do right now Instead of using a build data table, we can just go to variables and 
here we can basically just write new data table and the data table is going to be initialized and if we launch it right now the process is going to work and if we go to the uh, UiPath uh, projects we're going to find that this demo data table has been written and of course the data table is empty so why did I tell you this information? Simply because when we are using lists and dictionaries, for example, we need to use this syntax to initialize the variable. So we don't have a build uh, list, for example, or a build uh, dictionary. We have activities for collections, but generally speaking, the easiest way to initialize a list is by using the new and of course, we're going to say, for example, it's a list of strings. To initialize this list demo, we only need to give new list of string. And we can add strings to this list, but if we don't initialize it here, it's not going to work. This table right here is going to show you how you can initialize different types that are mostly used in UiPath and you can use it in your projects and inside of your default section in order to make sure that you're never gonna get the error object reference. I can finish the video here, but there is another use case that happens sometimes that I wanted to show you guys. So here I have created a simple process that builds a data table and this data table name is demo data table. And then I have a use application browser where I go to this website and I get the name and the phone number and I'm trying to add them to the data table that I have created. So here I have the name, I get the name and then I get the phone number and then I try to add them inside of the demo data table. So let's run the process and see what's going to happen. We get the error, object reference not set an instance an object, of course. So why does it happen? If you can stop the video and know exactly why it happened, then you definitely know what you're doing. You probably shouldn't be watching this video. But if it's not the case, don't worry. We're here to learn. And what I did actually was very easy to understand once you see it. So the problem was I created, an I created a variable called demo data table in here. And I came here and I couldn't find the variable demo data table. So what happens sometimes, let's delete it. What happens sometimes is that you come here and you try to you try to type in the, the, the variable name of the, the, the variable that you have created before and you can't find it. And if you are working in a big project, if you're working with a, a really long project, you just recreate it again thinking that you have failed to create it the first time. But it's not the case. It's just the scope that was wrong. So here, what we do is that we have to go to the first scope and basically change the scope of the data table from sequence to main sequence. And then, of course, it's going to work. And if you ever uh, do the mistake of recreating the variable twice, Let's recreate the error and let's create the demo data table again. If you recreate the variable twice and it's not working, I will give you a tip. Go to data manager and in the data manager, try to find all of your variables inside of the sequences that you have. So here we have the demo data table and another demo data table. So we can delete this one, delete variable, and then we can come here and then we can change this, uh, the scope from sequence to main. And now, as you can see, the demo data table have went to main and it's accessible here. So use this data manager to be sure that your variables are visible across your whole project. So that was the, the, the tip that I wanted to give. And yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe. And until next time, peace.